So welcome to Techno Day Life and my name is Jeff and so today what we're going to do is go over what is Usenet, a little bit of its history, and basically the things you need to know to get started. So if you like this video make sure you like and subscribe and I will include links or I'll try to include links to everything I mentioned in this video down in the description below. So what is Usenet? So basically Usenet was started in the early 1980s and so it was two things. So one was it was a bulletin board system sort of like Reddit is today. Actually sort of Reddit took over the place of Usenet. And the other thing it was a file sharing platform. Now if you think back to the 1980s computers were not that fast, storage was not that big. So they created a NZB file which is sort of like a turnt file and that it would point to the different chunks of a file that then you could download from the servers. So basically Usenet is on private servers. So one of the benefits to Usenet which is over torrent files is that since they're on private servers the download speeds are considerably faster than torrent files. The other thing is that it is anonymized so basically it uses HTTPS so a, your service provider can't see the files that you are downloading. So you'll need to start out with four things and so if the first is a computer, it doesn't really matter what kind of computer, there's software that will run on Windows, Mac and also Linux. So if you have a Linux server you can do it on that. Next you'll need a Usenet provider and those are relatively cheap. Uh, they can be, depending on the time of year, different specials for different holidays. It can be as low as $3 a month. And so yes, this does cost money, but what you get back is speed. The third thing you'll need is an NZB indexer. So that is actually a separate website that usually you have to pay for, but there are some free ones that actually indexes those files so you can search them and download them. A lot of the NZB files aren't in plain English so they'll have uh, a file format that you can't read. So you need an indexer to actually find the files but also see what the files are. And finally you need what's called a Usenet client which is basically a downloading software that can take your NZB file, download it from the server onto your computer or your server. So let's take a look at each one of those parts individually and see how they go together. So traditionally there have been two NZB download clients and so the first one, and I don't know how to say these names because I've never heard them out loud, but Snabnin BD, which is actually the only one that's currently updated. And the other one is NZB get. NZB get hasn't been updated in three years though, so probably not a good idea to use that one at this time. So to start out with, you'll have to download Saab uh, with the appropriate Windows, Mac, Linux, or NAS uh, software that you need. So next you'll have to get a Usenet service provider. And so I'm going to show you the one I use now, but then later on I'm going to show you some other resources where you can get more complicated with things. So the one I use is Usenet server. So basically you'll need to sign up for a Usenet provider. And then they will provide you the information that you need to put into your Usenet client, so Saab, and then that will make it so you'll be having the basics of being able to download NZB files. And once you log in, you'll see a search dashboard where you'll be able to search for things, but it's not quite as complete as we want. We want to be able to automate things. So for this, we're going to search for Ubuntu and we want to change the age to max and then we'll click search. And then that will show us a bunch of random files that people have uploaded over the years and then we can pick out the one that we want and we can download it. And so how we would download that, we could hit the quick NZB download and then we'll be able to use our SAB to actually download the file. But if we want to do everything natively in the app, the SAB app, from our desktop or from our server, we need an indexer. And so for, for me, the indexer I use is nzbgeek.info, and it will have guides on how to add the information to your SAB 
software to actually download files and search for files. Or I'll leave a link in the description of setting this up uh, that I did a few years ago, which is probably a little easier. Now, now you have the basics of Usenet. So there are some advanced things that we need to talk about too. So first, if you want to learn more about this, you, there is a, on Reddit, there's a slash Usenet group where they have a wiki that will go over all this information. But once pretty much this video covered the basics of that, sort of more advanced things that you need to know is you can have multiple providers. And so those Usenet providers, and why would we want that? So sometimes files are incomplete and you can have them uh, different networks or different Usenet providers will have all the pieces or different pieces of the puzzle. And so you would have your regular Usenet provider and then you would buy uh, credits on a different one to as backup to find those extra files. So now the interesting thing that we can see here, so we have three different Usenet providers up here. And if we look at this middle part, so here we have Usenet service. So its backbone is Omnicron. And then its takedown policy is DMCA because it's based in the United States. Now here's a different Usenet provider. It's Frugal Usenet and its backbone is Net News and Usenet Farm. And so because it has a different backbone or original provider, of the files. So Usenet is sort of a big conglomeration. So basically there's different main providers and then there's resellers after that. I should have mentioned that earlier. So that backbone is the original provider and then like the Usenet server is the reseller or the frugal net is the reseller for the other one. And then this one has DC, DMCA and NTD. So these are their takedown policies. So basically, because they both have DMCA, if there's a takedown from DMCA, it'll probably affect both of them. Now in this last one, you see Tweak News, which also has the Omicron backbone, but its takedown policy is only NTD. So it will only be affected by NTD takedowns and not DMCA takedowns. So this sounds complicated, but it's pretty simple. It, basically, what files are available depends on what country you're in, what takedown policies they are, and what backbones policy, or backbone it is. So but besides Usenet providers, you might think about getting different indexers too, because again, indexers are only as good as the software and the people that make them. And then there's also specialized indexers for different types of content. So again, the basics of Usenet is you need a working computer. You have to have a subscription to provider, a subscription to an indexer, and you need the proper software to download your NZB files. The benefits, again, are it's more private, faster download speeds. Negatives is it costs money and it is more complicated to set up. But once it's set up, it's pretty darn easy. So if you'd like to see a video of how to set up the SAB software, just leave a, a comment down in the description below. Otherwise, you take care. Have a great day. Bye-bye.